Welcome back to King of Hearts, Queen of Sorrows. I'm going to be talking about Mobile Fighter G Gundam episode 25. Uh, I want to say sorry for uh, having been so long, but I'm back now. I'm going to be very much focused on finishing up this show. There's uh, it's 49, so I don't know, 24 episodes left, I guess. And uh, hopefully I'll get through them pretty quickly. Um, but regardless, it will be consistently. So here we go. Talking about G Gundam. 25 this is my analysis because I'm less of a reviewer and more of an analyzer. First of all, this image of uh, Master Asia is so cool. Um, he's, you know, back from the dead seemingly. Uh, <laughs> I already have like four or five gifts uh, prepared, which, you know, I'm, I think just because I'm so excited, I don't expect this to hold out for very long. But um, <laughs> since this is basically a clip episode, uh, they replayed the clip of Domoon taking off in Burning Gundam and his jets or afterburners or whatever you call those things igniting Master Gundam and Master Gundam exploding with Master Asia inside. Now, uh, he's back somehow. Somehow Master Asia survived that extreme explosion. Um, I like to refer to that as, uh, you know, Domoon burning his bridges. Like, he's so done with Master Asia, he's willing to blow him up. I'm sure it was unintentional, but still. It, it looked like it was, you know, maybe on purpose. Anyway, so yeah, Master Asia's back. That's a big surprise. But also, um, Noble Chapman and uh, Michelo Chariot are back. And uh, that's a big surprise because they were both supposed to have been disqualified. Uh, if I remember the Gundam fight rules, which I think I remember them more than the show remembers them, and uh, there are people out there who remember them more than I do. Um, we all know that those guys were disqualified when Domun destroyed the head of the uh, the Gundam. Plus, I mean, Mikolo got arrested, didn't he? So it's kind of weird. Hey, his hair turned like a weird color after he got attacked. And I noticed that Master Asia's hair turned white back in um, the Guiana Highlands. Uh, what's up with that? Anyway, does Domun have a... Is he dyeing their hair, bleaching it with the, uh, the light from the uh, Shining Finger? Anyway... Moving on from that irrelevant stuff, uh, I like that these guys are back, um, mostly for what they're going to be doing in the future, but also because really their presence here lets us know right away that something uh, foul is afoot at the uh, 13th Gundam fight final round or preliminaries or whatever. Um, it's it's going to be weird. Uh, we see a bunch of more Gundams here. We pre got a preview of them in like episode 22 or so as they were rushing towards the site of the finals, but here they are all... Um, around the uh, like the Olympic torch type thing uh, apparently they've got one for the Gundam fight too um, and uh, anyway that's pretty neat uh, you know something I really liked about this was um, they all did and I mean this is a joke okay but they all did the Roman salute which is the Nazi salute and uh, I was tickled by that not because it well one because it looked like the Nazi salute which you know that's never a good look especially when Japan was an ally of the Axis powers and worked with Germany in World War II Sorry, I don't know what they were thinking, but uh, like that's that's not a good look, guys. The nationalism I'm fine with because um, I really don't want to have to pause here and clarify that I am in fact a mud person who would have been thrown into a gas chamber along with uh, you know the gays, the gypsies, the Jews, everybody else um, because I'm definitely not Aryan. But um, gosh, man, nationalism nationalism is a more complicated thing than. Uh, the current political climate allows us to talk about without being uh, dogpiled by people. But um, when, for instance, all the Gundam fighters were fighting for the sake of their nations, for the pride of their nations against the Dark Gundam, which threatens all of humanity, it threatens all nations, uh, and Nastasha was encouraging them to fight for the pride and prestige and whatever of their nations and also for the people of their nations, that was a good thing. So there's a good element to nationalism. I won't go into it very much further. Um, but more than that, I really enjoyed the, um, you know, there was like that little display between Master Asia and Domun, and it was funny because they were bitter enemies. Like, I don't know how long it took for Domun to slingshot off of the rail, like to get from the Guiana Highlands up into the sky to slingshot off the rail or the ring or the rope or whatever, and then come back into atmosphere and land in Hong Kong. But he landed there and then, gosh, I don't know if this episode takes place like the next day or the same day or what. It's probably the same day. Um, but he and Master had just been in a fight to the death and yet they're able to come at each other as opponents. Like Domun just kind of accepts the fact that Master Age is back somehow 
And the guy rolls with it. Like, he's not even like, oh, great master, I didn't kill you after all. There's a squirrel eating a, uh, what do you call those things that I dropped from the conifer trees? A pine cone. That is awesome. Anyway, I've never seen that in the wild. I, I heard a noise, and, uh, I mean, I'd stop and take a video of it right now if I didn't have to fur hurry up and finish this review before my break was over. That's so cool. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> I'm leaving that in there. Um, but, like, I, I talked previously also about, like, sportsmanship and how awesome it can be and it's kind of beautiful that um they can come at each other as equals as opponents um they know that there are stakes between them that there is still like a beef between them but they're going to settle it through sportsmanship and through combat and there's something beautiful to me especially honestly within like how things are so divided in the united states right now politically that you can come at someone that you can have an opponent they can be your rival they can be a sworn enemy even and you can deal with them you can work with them um at a level where you're not trying to take them out, destroy them, kill them, whatever. You can come to them as equals on a, a level playing field that you decide, hey, this is the battleground where we will settle the differences between us or like even beyond that. Well, it's kind of hard to, to clarify exactly what I'm trying to say, but yeah, I think you get the picture that like we can decide that on these terms, uh, in this arena, we will do our battle. And outside of that, we can be cordial with one another, even while disliking each other, even while all these other things. And I think that's really important. And I think it's uh, something super cool that they exemplify um, in the show, especially it being a kid show and, uh, you know, impressionable minds and whatnot. Uh, it's important for them to see that sort of thing, uh, that sort of ethic, uh, even against somebody, you know, and Domun does it even to somebody like Master Asian. Of course, they're, they're not trying to say that the people doing the show weren't trying to say that you should excuse someone who's extreme or whose behavior is so extreme, but it's just an illustration, an illusion, something for you to call upon later in life, I think. And it's funny, too, because, like, on a meta level, we need villains. We need villains to create conflict so that we can enjoy the exploits of the heroes. And, you know, we often uh, will enjoy what the heroes or the villains do even more than the heroes sometimes. And it's just kind of an interesting thing. Anyway, uh, moving on. Uh, again, if you're watching the video version of the podcast, uh, there's, you know, a bonus because you're getting to see images slide by. And I'm focusing on them. So, like, right now, the image is showing the uh, Shuffle Alliance assembled right there at the games. Um, they're, you know, brothers in arms, they're, uh, standing shoulder to shoulder in their Gundams, and they are each ready to try to seize the championship for themselves, the title for themselves, because they each have so much riding on this game, on this match, um, so it, it just, the show's really cool because it puts, uh, you know, the, I mean, it's standard shown and stuff though, you know, it puts the personal stakes of the individual characters along with something much bigger and greater than them themselves. And that's an internal struggle. They have to see, will they, you know, fight for their own personal thing or will they fight for their nation or, you know, whatever obligations, larger obligations to society at large, whatever they have or what. And, uh, and it's just really cool to see that these guys are the top five. And again, like from an outside perspective, these guys are main characters and the show lets us know, Hey, these guys, one of these guys, five guys is going to win um, because they've got the Shuffle Crests. They're part of the Shuffle Alliance, which means that they are amazing martial artists with incredible power, talent, skill, and ability. And uh, there are others who are favored to win, though, too. And we get introduced to them briefly. And uh, I think that's really cool. Um, I really love the setup for this. It feels... Um, like, the fact that it was a uh, clip show mostly, but that it was introducing new things, it feels like a perfect jumping on point, and I'm glad that I paused where I did and allowed myself to handle um, Going Ultra Season 2, which is talking all about the uh, Ultraman 2019, which is a Super Eye Productions and Netflix uh, thing. Uh, it released April 1st, and I'm all done with that. Uh, but like I was saying... It's a perfect point to jump back into the show. Um, like, they fudged some things, like, with the rule, like... You know, like, uh, you know, with the guys coming back who were disqualified, like they shouldn't be there, but the show makes it okay. Um, but you know, it, from one standpoint, like from a meta narrative standpoint, you can see like, oh, they're just kind of working those guys in there. But also, like I said earlier, it serves the purpose of maybe showing you that things aren't quite right, um, which is pretty cool. So anyway, I'm glad to be back to the show. Uh, my analysis and reviews are going to be a lot looser like this. Um, even talking about squirrels I see eating stuff, um, <laughs> But yeah, that's that's pretty much it. So you can expect more. And again, I would love feedback. I welcome feedback. Um, tell me uh, like what you'd like more of or what you're enjoying so much about what I'm doing or 
whatever, you know, basically compliment critique. Uh, that's kind of the, the formula. If you have a compliment, give it and you know, I'll appreciate it. And if you've got a critique, I'll listen and hopefully make myself better. Um, everything's still, uh, shuttled or, or, um, pushed over to uh, mjmunoz.com, which is my website. It used to be luminousbeings.blog. Luminous Beings will direct there, but mjmunoz.com is my current site. I'm trying to build my brand as an author and whatever else I am. And I'm kind of going to, I'm going to basically be trying to write in the background quietly and then doing um, reviews, analysis of shows and stuff that I enjoy. Shows, manga, comics, um, whatever, uh, going forward. Cause like, I want to always be putting stuff out there for you, uh, people to enjoy. And I enjoy the stuff too. And if I'm going to watch something and enjoy, it, I may as well review it, write about it, talk about it, um, do something more and to elevate it and to hopefully help myself, um, in my goals of being a successful writer in the future, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, you can check that out. Uh, I've also got a coffee account. So if you want to give me a little tip, um, for doing all this stuff, if you want to show some appreciation in a monetary fashion, you can definitely do that, and I will gladly accept it. So, um, yeah, there's not much more else I have to say. So from here on out, I'm going to be doing um, King Hearts, Queen of Sorrows, and uh, another writer cast, which is talking about Kamen Rider, which is Tokusatsu, which is also from Japan. Uh, but I'll be talking about these things for the next little while. Hopefully within a couple months, like two, three months, uh, I'll be completely done with both of them. And then you'll just have to uh, decide if you want to stick around for the next ongoing project that I do. I think... If you like this, you'll probably like that, though, too. Anyway, coffee.com slash mjmunoz, mjmunoz.com for all my other stuff. You can find the podcast, the links. Oh, I'm also going to do more, try to do more GIFs and maybe slightly longer text posts uh, on the actual blog, like for the show notes for each individual post. So, um, yeah, you can look forward to that. And um, that's all I have to say for reels. I'm done. So uh, until next time, remember to go out there. And grasp happiness.